welcome. My name is Paul Mefo, and I'm happy to have you. Uh, some time ago, I looked at the all-important uh, usage of websites for promotion of uh, your business. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the use of uh, images and photography in doing the same. This is important because uh, because of the changes in technology and the changes in the media industry. Uh, companies are no more able to spend so much money in staffing their organizations. They want to produce and make work at um, the barest minimum of cost. And so there is a reduction in the way in which companies employ people, even those who find themselves within those companies to manage to try to stay there through very hard work, uh, doing so many things at the same time. Um, a web designer, for example, may also be charged with the production of uh, online videos, uh, press releases, write-ups, and editorial shows, so that uh, one person is seen to do quite a number of work. Uh, but um, uh, for, for you to make that difference, you really, really need to uh, get going and stand out. And that means that you have to be well-versed and knowledgeable in the use of things like photography. You are able to do so many things at the same time. So in this case, we're talking about photography. For you to stand out, you need to have a basic knowledge of what it means to prepare photographs for different media for using either in your websites for billboards and others. I know it is an easy thing to hold a camera, point it at an object and click the snap button and there you go, you have a photo uh, of someone or an object taken at once. It's more easy uh, when you can do this from your handheld or smartphone, but it can also be difficult when the exposure is bad or the composition is nothing to write home about and even worse when you've just missed the opportunity of recording a once in a lifetime event and can't recreate the scenery. Uh, this kind of situation is one in which you draw on the knowledge and experiences gathered over time for use in a snappy fashion. In these days of digital revolution and digital photography, most people don't really bother about the fundamentals of photography. They wouldn't bother because most of the controls they were personally uh, to handle are now in the digital camera. However, to be at the top of your game and make success of it, you need to know uh, your camera controls, such as shutter speed, aperture, film speed, especially if you're using the SLR camera. Um, and to understand what this means for exposure, visual communication and aesthetics. And now let's look at exposure. Exposure is the amount of light that reaches the film through the lens and into the camera body to the shutter where the film is located. It, it is um, defined as time times intensity. This refers to the shutter speed aperture. Uh, shutter speeds are set up on the body of the camera and control the time factor of an exposure that normally run into fraction of a second. Uh, times or speeds are doubles or halves of one another like 1 over 125 is half of 1 over 1 over 250 and double of uh, 1 over 60. Uh, one major effect of the shutter speed is the recording of movement with a fast speed freezing it and a slow speed giving a blurred impression. The second factor in exposure is the aperture control. This refers to the amount of light going through the lens into the camera. A series of blades inside the lens called aperture rings open and close according to settings. And these controls referred to f-stops are usually from f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, f11, f16, and all that. And like the shutter speeds are all halves or doubles of each other. 
understanding of the relationship between these controls is important as any single exposure can be made in different combination of them. If you change the shutter speed or uh, aperture, then the other is affected and must be changed accordingly. Uh, now the film. The film is the device on which images are recorded and would be mostly used in an analog medium rather than digital, where chips would be the order of the day. The film is made of uh, different lighting conditions with some types more or less responsive to light. This helps the photographer make images in low or bright light environments. Um, the film is given different number values, which indeed are speed values, usually from 50 to the 3200 ISO. A basic rule is the higher the number, the faster is the film, and therefore more sensitive to light, as well as better working in low light conditions. If the ISO is higher, the more grainy is the film and of poorer quality. And that's the film. Now let's look at the lens. Camera lens is another factor in photography and image making. They come in different focal lengths, meaning the distance and angle at which the lens can work effectively. Uh, the 35mm SL, SLR camera um, has a standard lens of 50mm, which means it gives images that are without distortion at this setting. However, a 28mm wide angle lens can change the view effectively and widen it dramatically, while a 200mm telephoto lens can get the perspective restricted and allow close-up images of comparatively distant objects. A combination of these lenses is known as zoom lens, and it will be worthwhile to mention here that in a non-digital environment, the SLR camera type is very popular because of its design and simplicity of use, as well as its advantages over others like the interchangeable lens, TTL light meter, focus and range of equipment. It is probably the first choice for photojournalists in a non-digital era. Um, finding and using photographs. Although we have talked about the importance of knowing and having ideas that enables you to generate your own images for use in different work settings, it is not unlikely that there will be many who would prefer to buy stock images um, there are a number of organizations that sell stock photographs and their products are easy to use once purchase and copyright issues are cleared. This shouldn't be a problem as the rights for the products would have uh, been secured before the sale. However, it will be right to double check that all legal issues are in order. One of the stock photo and video outfits that I can talk about or recommend is Photolia. They also do royalty-free vectors, some of which can be downloaded for free and are worth checking out. Okay, that's the bit we have to take for this uh, particular, uh, should I call it lecture, but <laughs> this particular video session uh, on the use of uh, media, images and photography. Until next time again, my name is Paul Mefo and thanks for being here and staying, staying with us. Join us again on the online business and media coaching uh, blog and uh, programs production. Thanks again and take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye.